We've been around the world. City to city. But it's still one city we ain't take y'all to yet. Let's go! Jay-Z and Kanye West, two rap giants, each established in the rap world in their own unique ways, and both legends in the hip-hop realm. Kanye's career really took off as a producer for Jay-Z, and later he also started rapping, leading to the creation of the legendary collaboration album Watch the Throne. However, over the years, the two had a falling out. How that happened is what you'll learn in today's video. To understand the relationship between the two, we need to go back to the very beginning. It all started in the early 2000s when Kanye was a ghost producer, eventually catching the attention of rap heavyweight Jay-Z. Kanye produced the song This Can't Be Life for Jay-Z. This marked the beginning of a long and legendary career and collaboration. Jay-Z immediately recognized Kanye's potential, leading Kanye to produce several songs on the legendary Jay-Z album, Blueprint. But Kanye wasn't just a producer, he also contributed to the lyrics of some songs. This means Kanye was essentially a ghostwriter as well. This is how Kanye West finally made it into the hip-hop world. He was signed by Rockefeller Records as a producer and became a heavyweight in the producer scene. Everyone knew his name. For example, he produced the song Stand Up by Ludacris. This is a legendary track and arguably Ludacris's most successful song. Kanye was simply successful, but you know him. The man is full of creativity and strives for much more. That's why he wanted to start rapping. But not everyone was excited about this idea. In case you didn't know, Kanye wasn't a gangster before his success. He was just a normal boy from Chicago. And this is what Jay-Z apparently didn't really like. He didn't like the idea of someone like Kanye wanting to rap. For him, a rapper had to have lived the hustler lifestyle long before the big career and come from the hood. And the people at Rockefeller felt the same way. They didn't really see the potential in Kanye, they just wanted him to keep producing. But Kanye believed in his vision. That's why he recorded his first demo tape on the side and sent it to several labels, hoping to get a label deal. At first, this didn't work out as he had hoped because Kanye didn't really get any offers. But Rockefeller saw a threat now. They saw the danger of losing one of the best producers in the game. That's why they gave Kanye his first rap deal, just to keep him at Rockefeller. However, Rockefeller still didn't take Kanye seriously. He just didn't fit into this gangster image. Kanye dressed very colorfully and wore backpacks. And back then, people just didn't get that style. But on October 23, 2002, an event occurred that would change Kanye's life forever. After a long studio session in LA, Kanye fell asleep at the wheel and crashed straight into another car. In this accident, Kanye broke his entire jaw multiple times. He had to have a metal plate implanted. Moreover, he had to relearn how to pronounce letters like T and S in sequence. But he managed that. And two weeks after his accident, he recorded the song Through the Wire. This song later went platinum in the USA. The song is also a piece of hip hop history. Apparently, Kanye found his tone in rapping because of this accident. This reminds me a bit of the 50 Cent story where he was shot in the mouth. Now, let's do a little time jump to February 10, 2004, when the album The College Dropout was released. With this album, Kanye finally made his breakthrough as a rapper. He even won a Grammy for it. Through this album, Kanye became incredibly respected in the rap world. People now simply understood that this guy is incredibly creative. However, there were rumors that Jay-Z was jealous of Kanye West's success. On the song Big Brother, which is also on the graduation album, Kanye West first really addresses his relationship with Jay-Z. In this track, Kanye is very honest. He gives Jay-Z his props, saying that he's like a big brother to him and that there's a brotherly competition between them. However, he also mentions that Jay-Z copied him with the Coldplay feature, which is also on the graduation album. Jay-Z later discussed his side of the Coldplay feature story in an interview. As mentioned, Kanye is very honest in this track. He also points out that Jay-Z didn't invite him to a big show. Jay-Z later explained his side of this situation as well. 
One might think that Jay-Z wouldn't be happy about Kanye talking about him like that even though he gave him props. But that's not the case as Jay-Z said that it was his favorite track on the album. In 2009 there was the legendary VMA incident where Kanye West stormed Taylor Swift's stage. I, I'm really happy for you, I'm gonna let you finish. But Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. One of the best videos of all time. She was about to give a speech after winning the award for best female video. Kanye disagreed with this, believing that Beyonce, Jay-Z's wife, deserved the title. Kanye was apparently drunk that day and he made a complete fool of himself, which is now history since it's one of the most famous VMA moments ever. Even though Kanye was defending Beyonce, she didn't appreciate it at all. Which is understandable because Kanye embarrassed himself and dragged her into it. Despite this, Kanye and Jay-Z's relationship remained normal. In 2011, they finally released the album Watch the Throne. This album is historic in rap, groundbreaking, and in my opinion, one of the best collaboration albums ever. The relationship between the two has always been strange. Jay-Z was initially the villain who didn't want Kanye to rap, then Kanye became the crazy one making a fool of himself, and now Kanye showed his crazy side again. After recording Watch the Throne, both worked on their solo albums. Jay-Z recorded two solo songs and showed them to Kanye. When Kanye heard them, he freaked out. He wanted those songs to be on Watch the Throne, they ended up arguing for four days. After Watch the Throne, Jay-Z released a solo album and Kanye seemed still pissed. He didn't promote the album even though Jay-Z was his homie, buddy and label mate. Instead, Kanye preferred to post about how much he loved the movie Pacific Rim. Personally, I didn't think the movie was that great, but that's another topic. It was a strange situation. At a live show, Kanye also mentioned that he didn't like Jay-Z's new stuff with Justin Timberlake. In 2016, Kanye released his new album, The Life of Pablo, exclusively on Jay-Z's streaming platform, Tidal. Thanks to this exclusivity, the app reached number one in the App Store in the US. But shortly afterward, Kanye released the album on all usual streaming platforms like Spotify, Apple Music, etc. Later, the song Saint Pablo was added to the Life of Pablo tracklist. In this track, Kanye raps about Apple offering him a $100 million contract. He intended to give 20 million of that to Jay-Z as compensation for no longer being on Tidal. However, he decided against it to stay loyal to his friend. He also addresses the Taylor Swift VMA incident, suggesting that he just wants Jay-Z to have his back next time. I think these lines show how complicated their relationship is. It's very strange. Kanye is loyal, but he doesn't hold back and openly says that he didn't like how Jay-Z handled the VMA incident. Later that same year, Kanye's then wife was robbed in Paris. This experience was reportedly very disturbing for the whole family and Kanye found out about it while he was performing a show. There's a video of it which I'll show you here. I'm sorry. 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 Family emergency. I have to stop the show. He's kidding. He's kidding. He's kidding. Due to this incident, Kanye was apparently really struggling. The guy already has mental health issues and he just didn't have the support from his friend and former mentor, Jay-Z. That's precisely why Kanye had a major outburst at one of his shows, delivering a 20-minute rant. It's a new world, Jay-Z! Hey, don't send killers out my head, bro! This ain't the Malcolm X movie. We grow it from that moment. He did this at several shows. After this outburst, Kanye was hospitalized for mental health issues. I think we can attribute these outbursts to that. I find it very unnecessary, especially to air it all out in public and during a show. But it's Kanye, we all know him. Jay-Z didn't initially respond to all these provocations. However, in the track Kill Jay-Z, which came out later, he said the following. For $20 million that he gave Kanye, he got 20 minutes of that hate speech at his show. 
Kanye addressed this line in an interview and lawyers got involved because Kanye had legal issues with Tidal. It got nasty. Whenever lawyers get involved, it gets nasty. Despite this, they still seem to have the utmost respect for each other. They're still friends, just going through a dispute. That's exactly how both of them explained it. Kanye also revealed that it hurt him that Jay-Z didn't come to his wedding. After that, things quieted down a bit regarding this whole issue. The two seemed, or rather seemed, to have drifted apart. But at P. Diddy's 50th birthday party, they were both invited. They met, and there's a video of them greeting each other and talking briefly. It seemed like things were getting better. And last year, Kanye released the album Donda. Jay-Z was featured on the title track. It was their first collaboration since 2011. The two seem to have reconnected, and I'm incredibly happy about that. I'm a huge hip-hop fan, as you all know. And I think they have incredible chemistry as a duo on tracks. This beef is a somewhat unusual one because there were no diss tracks or anything like that. It all happened more behind the scenes. Still, I think this beef is incredibly important for the legacy of both rappers and for hip-hop history in general. Personally, it seems to me that Kanye is like the little brother who always wants attention from his big brother Jay-Z. But I could be wrong, that's just my impression of the whole situation or the situations that have happened in the past. Well, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to comment and rate the video, it would really support me. Well, thanks again. See you next time. Take care. Bye.